On today's episode of Stormwatch, we travel to the Oak Creek campus to find out what training does it take to become a police officer. We sit down with MATC graduate and MechLine EMT, Gert Groman. I love being an EMT because I really think that it's important to be able to give back to the community. Also, we're going to show you how a criminal justice degree helps keep the Milwaukee Public Museum safe. All this and more on today's episode of Storm. and welcome to Stormwatch. I'm Mike Furnick. The recent 10-year anniversary of 9-11 served as a poignant reminder of the brave men and women who sacrificed their lives so that others may live, the ones we call first responders. They are fire and police personnel, ambulance drivers, EMTs, doctors, nurses, even child care and public safety workers. When we look for heroes, we need not look to the movies, but rather to these extraordinary individuals who, when called upon in an emergency, stay cool and focused under pressure even in the midst of danger. Through their efforts, lives are saved. Today on Stormwatch, we examine MATC's connection to those who face emergencies. My co-host today is Rosemary Erkins. Welcome, Rosemary. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Mike. I'm a registered nurse, and I've earned a bachelor's degree of nursing after graduating from MATC's practical nursing and associate degree program. I began my nursing, that's where I began my nursing career. Currently, I'm a program coordinator for the practical nursing program at MATC. I've been teaching here at the downtown campus for 23 years. Nursing is a wonderful profession. Thanks for being with us today. Why don't you introduce our first segment? My pleasure, Mike. The high-risk traffic stop. Police are confronted with them day in and day out. What may begin as a simple traffic violation can often turn deadly if officers are not prepared. We visited the Oak Creek campus to see how new recruits get the training they need to handle these high-risk situations. The sun rises. It's early in the morning, a brisk 34 degrees on this November day. Here, at the MATC Oak Creek campus, police recruits are continuing their training. Recruit Megan Rosa describes a typical day. Start at 7.30. We have a roll call just like you would at a police department. We go over some uh, recent topics in the news and so forth. And then we start class. Um, either it's classroom work where we're in the book and we're learning um, the techniques or we're actually out doing the practical law enforcement techniques either you know in the uh, we have a mount room where we do defense and arrest tactics we're out on the shooting range um, learning to um, use the various weapons and uh, tools that are available to officers or we're outside like today uh, it doesn't matter what kind of weather we're outside we're training Richard Cole is the recruit training coordinator and oversees the entire program. Today, the recruits behind me are training in high-risk vehicle traffic stops. It's uh, the next step from a traffic stop that many of the recruits would do, like your standard traffic stop where you just stop on the side of the highway for a traffic violation. This is more of the high-risk sort of thing where you either have uh, wanted felons, people on warrants, or some other uh, type of weapon issue. We work through the technical college system. It's something that uh, smaller departments, suburban departments, will send their people through our program. Otherwise, our students can also pay to put themselves through it so they become more certifiable and attractive candidates for employment. I heard about the program through word of mouth um, since I was like 15, 16. Uh, just talking to a lot of officers, they all have gone through it. It's a fairly well-known program and I've actually had the opportunity to travel outside of Wisconsin and to uh, talk to other officers in other states and uh, it's in high demand, people that have Wisconsin training. Um, and anyone that's from the Milwaukee area knows to come to MATC. 
It's a 13-week program for a total of 520 hours. It includes um, everything from legal context to tactical classes, uh, basically everything that the state lays out that is the introductory uh, training that every police officer in the state of Wisconsin does. One thing the recruits made sure to mention was the help and guidance from the instructors involved, such as recruit Carlton Thomas. The instructors are, are fun to have in the classroom. They're, they take they take this training personal and they really care care what they're teaching. It's not that's what they state they're not just here for for their personal reasons, but they're here to see us succeed because in the past year there has been an increase of law enforcement officer deaths across the country. And it's very crazy that he take his training seriously and he wanna see us go home every single night. Nobody is born a cop. Nobody's born knowing which rules to follow, what rights people have, uh, have guaranteed to them in the Constitution, how to conduct an effective investigation. And watching people go through this process, you can see a transition when people are actually sitting there and they're going from confusion to a little bit of not really understanding it, to getting it, to being able to apply it. Right here is application. Clear. I can tell those recruits aren't playing around out there. They take their training very seriously because it just may save a life someday. For more information about the police training program, visit ecampus.matc.edu backslash police training. There's nothing more important to our community than our children's safety. Parents and teachers want kids to learn simple and easy to remember ways to be prepared in the event of an emergency. We all know that a fire or tornado drill might frighten children if they've never had to deal with it before. Let's take a look at some positive ways to get this important safety message across. You might want to get an exterior shot. We offer a wide variety of activities for children. We do creative activities with them like art and music and movement activities and dramatic play. We offer activities that are going to teach them their math skills, their reading skills, their writing skills. We do do um, certain theme units based around how to respond in certain emergency situations. We just completed doing a unit on fire safety. We had the fire department come. The children got to work with the firefighters and learn about fire safety. They got to go out and see the fire truck. Um, we also talk about what to do when it's raining, um, what to do if you get lost. We do that through a number of different activities with the different children. It may be through creative activities. A lot of it's done through dramatic play with the children. Well, one of the ways we make learning about emergencies fun or emergency situations um, fun and less scary for children is that we um, set up our dramatic play areas so the children can practice those situations themselves. So they get to be the firefighter and they get to be putting out the fire or they get to be the doctor or nurse taking care of someone who's been sick or hurt. Um, and that gives them a sense of, of control and it makes them uh, feel better about those particular situations. Well, one of the ways we make learning about emergencies fun or emergency situations um, fun and less scary for children is that we um, set up our dramatic play areas so the children can practice those situations themselves. So they get to be the firefighter and they get to be putting out the fire or they get to be the doctor or nurse taking care of someone who's been sick or hurt. Um, and that gives them a sense of, of control and it makes them uh, feel better about those particular situations. Kind of repetitive for the children like the stop, drop, and roll. Um, that's that's something that they learn those three simple words, they can say them, they practice them. Um, so that's kind of the activities that are really fun for them. Um, you know, if we stop, look both ways, is it safe? That's what our community needs, more positive and effective ways to keep our children safe. We saw before how MATC's Oak Creek campus specializes in criminal justice and law enforcement. With that same training, students can also pursue careers in public safety and security, as you're about to see in our next story.
Down at the Oak Creek campus, the criminal justice law enforcement program plays a major part at this campus. Here students are not only trained to get jobs as law enforcement officers, but can also become security guards, like the ones at our own Milwaukee Public Museum. spoke with a few of them where they talked about their training. As a security guard here at the Milwaukee Public Museum, uh, we're usually, our responsibilities are to control uh, access to the building, uh, not generally just not the public, but uh, if we have uh, any kind of maintenance workers, contract workers, delivery people, uh, guests of curators, uh, employees to kind of uh, be aware of the comings and goings of the museum, people coming in for work or making deliveries or doing any kind of uh, uh, specialized jobs here at the museum. We also need to be aware of uh, the exhibits themselves, the condition of the exhibit floors, make sure all the lights are working, uh, make sure there's no uh, uh, dam weather damage uh, like uh, rain or uh, anything uh, that would affect the overall functioning of the museum where it wouldn't be ready for it to uh, receive public visitors on the next day. Uh, we also need to um, control actually access to the dioramas and exhibits themselves. Uh, a lot of them are in secured areas and uh, an escort, one of us would be needed to open the area if a curator needs to get in there, uh, adjust something change out an artifact or just uh, maybe go in and, and identify a certain artifact. And we also need to uh, uh, kind of keep, uh, generally just keep every, an eye on everything, make sure everyone is uh, behaving themselves, that it's a safe environment both for public and for our employees. We spoke with Tom Kraft about his job and how security makes a difference. You know, the other thing that I really appreciate about our trained security force is that they're here before and after hours so that when we all come into work, you know, we feel really good knowing that they're on scene, um, not walking into an empty building or some such thing. And, and you know, after hours, the guys, uh, the ladies and gentlemen who are composing our security force are you know, they're making us feel comfortable as we leave for the building. Um, I always admire them so much because they're really here 24-7 and 365 days a year. You know, why? Really to protect the, the you know, the priceless artifacts here in the museum. Uh, what I often think of them, or maybe I think a little of them as I fall asleep. I know that they're, when I'm relaxing, they're protecting uh, our facility, you know, it's really a treasure for the city and they're making sure that everything's uh, safe and sound here at the museum. Well, that sure is an interesting twist on security. When we think of guards, we think of banks and armored cars. Yet I think our public treasures, like those at the museum, definitely deserve the same level of protection. Now it's time to check out what events are coming up at MATC. Let's take a look. If you would like more information on events at MATC, visit www.matc.edu and look under the heading Newsroom. There you can click on the event of your choice. Emergency medical technicians are the ones we call first when people need medical, immediate medical attention. We wanted to know what their jobs are really like. To find out, we turned our attention to the accomplishments of Gert Groman, a graduate of the EMT program at MATC's Mequon campus. Let's have a look. 
Gert Grohman has been considered by his teachers to be one of the best students in MATC Mequon's 20-year program. I'm an EMT firefighter um, in a paid on-call department for Mequon and uh, my responsibilities include uh, responding to fire calls and uh, car accidents. Uh, we have both uh, fire response out of this station as well as our heavy rescue unit. I'm also an EMT IV tech and so I'm on call for our ambulance service. I started at MATC about four years ago and I took the Fire One class at MATC at the uh, Milwaukee Safety Academy and then after that about a year later I went back to MATC North Campus and I took the EMT basic class and then a year after that I went back and I took the EMT IV tech class. Probably one of the biggest things that I got at MATC was especially in the EMT basic class they focused really heavily on doing a good patient assessment because all of the tools that you're going to use when you're trying to, to treat somebody in the field and then get them to the hospital is going to be based on that initial assessment that you do when you first get on scene. And so there was a tremendous focus on doing a good baseline assessment of that patient. One of the other things that they taught a lot was critical thinking skills. So when we'd be doing exercises, they would tell you uh, symptoms that you might find or signs that you might see uh, with the patient. And what they, then what they'll do is they'll take it from there and you say, okay, now what's your course of treatment going to be based on what you're seeing and what the patient is telling you. In the EMT basic class, probably the biggest piece of advice that I would have would be stay ahead of the curve. Because as you go through that class, there are various different exams and you have to maintain a certain minimum score as you're going through the class. And so what happens is if you don't hit the class really, really hard up front, and start scoring well on the initial exams, it can be kind of an uphill battle as you go through the course and it becomes more and more and more stressful because you're battling to try to maintain the average to stay in the class. I love being an EMT because I really think that it's important to be able to give back to the community. When I was younger, I never took the opportunity to serve in the military or in the, the armed forces or anything. And I think that it's important that everybody spend some time serving their community. You were right, Mike. Gert serves as a fine example of the quality work MATC alumni do on a daily basis. A very high percentage of MATC students go on to work in their chosen fields. I look with gratitude at all the nurses I have trained over the years and for all the people they have been able to help. So far, we have seen emergency personnel in action. Let me take some time. right next to the cafeteria. Students now are able to buy supplies. In the MATC cafeteria, there used to be a lounge area with a TV and comfy chairs. All that has moved and now there is an MATC store where they sell things that students need. I talked to Beth Phillips and asked her what the main difference was between the new store and the bookstore across the street. The main difference is textbooks. You can get everything in this store at that store, but textbooks are not over here, obviously, because of the size limitations. This store is for everything else. Every MATC student knows that crossing 8th Street sometimes can be a little difficult. With this new store, I'm sure that there will be less jaywalking and less almost accidents. Depending on what time of year it is, the bookstore is usually packed with people. If you ran out of pens, you'd have to go across 8th Street. And now, they made it so much more convenient. The new store sells all school supplies and has a very short line usually. Uh, it's not always easy to get across 8th Street safely. Uh, so we've decided to bring over here all of the things that you would need on a short-term basis, like the uh, the, behind me are the supplies and all the fun stuff like t-shirts and mugs and water bottles too. Uh, I actually really loved it. Um, it was really convenient for me the other day when um, I realized I forgot my flash drive for my class and uh, it was going to be late if I had to go to the bookstore across the street. 
So I just came here, bought a flash drive, was on time for my class, and it was super convenient. First of all, we had to have identify a space. And once we did identify a space, we needed to work with the Student Senate to make sure we were not harming students by taking a, a lounge space away. Uh, then we had to work with, continue working with the Student Senate to get ideas for merchandise, what, would, what should be in here, what students want, what students needed. Construction Services was deeply involved with the planning, ordering all the fixtures, installing the fixtures, things like the gate in particular. The glass walls had to be topped off for security reasons, installing this beautiful cash wrap here. Um, we had designers involved, we had construction folks involved. And in the bookstore, we had a whole bunch of us picking out the merchandise, and then we had a whole bunch of us putting it up over here and making it look like it does right now. And the last step was throwing that door open for the first time. Beth also informed me that the merchandise that they sell here at this new store can also be bought on financial aid money, which is very pleasing to the students here. I'm sure that some students wouldn't go to Athens State to go get pencils and pens to take notes, but they would probably go to the third floor. So now students should be equipped with school supplies and ready to learn. All of the students that I have talked to said it is way more convenient. So far the response has been very strongly positive. I'm very encouraged to see that we're selling just as many packets of pens and uh, spiral notebooks as we are t-shirts right now. Now that may sound a little funny, but that tells me that we're serving you guys better. That's what you need at the moment that you wouldn't have gone to 8th and State for, so we're meeting that need. Now when I start seeing our t-shirts out there more often, I'll, I'll refocus on that part of it. But to me, it's more important that we have the lab coats where you can get at them, that we can get the mannequin heads to the Barber Cosmetology students when they need it. And darn it, you guys can get a flash drive without risking your life crossing 8th Street. Here's, we can now buy our food and school supplies in the same location. Have you ever wondered what type of training is needed to become an emergency medical technician? Well, wait no longer. Producers Will Picard and Dan Jarris travel to the Mequon campus so we can see firsthand what the basic EMT course is all about. Let's have a look. This week, Stormwatch reporters went to MATC's Mequon campus to look at the EMT basics course taught by instructor Ronald Aswaney. At first glance, this is a class that would appear to be teaching rudimentary medical skills. But in fact, completing this one semester long course will earn you an EMT certificate. As Mr. Oswaini says, this course prepares you for many different career opportunities. Most of our students go from graduation here, get a job on a private ambulance. This is also part of a uh, uh, job portion of the fire science course, the associate degree. One semester of this course also is part of that. So to become a EMT on a fire department, you're going to need this course also and be licensed by the state. Any job that requires any type of ambulance work, rescue squad work, firefighting. Uh, I, we have one a police officer in the class right now. So uh, it, it's just good general knowledge, even if it's for personal use of knowing um, a little bit about medicine, um, we teach anatomy, physiology, pathology. I mean, if you know how the body is built and you know how the body works and then you know what goes wrong with it, we teach you how to make it right again. In respect to the course itself, Mr. Oswini describes the goals of the course and what students are learning. Today we're doing uh, the wound care bandaging, so we're trying to get some of the major things that the students are going to see as far as bandaging techniques in the field, and then we're going to get into the more serious things at the later half of the class, which is gunshot wounds, stabbings, impaled objects, eviscerations, uh, flail chest, some of the major more life-threatening injuries that they'll know how to handle those and take care of them to maintain that stabilization of the patient to get him to the hospital alive. With students speaking of volunteer work and giving back to the community, the student perspective is just as positive. A multitude of different kinds of opportunities extend themselves after taking this class. You can, a uh, number of the folks in the course are uh, looking to work with fire departments. 
Uh, some are looking to actually work in emergency departments as emergency medical technicians in an ER. Uh, some people are uh, uh, going, one person's going to medical school, she hopes to, and wants some experience in it. Um, and other people are looking to work with uh, uh, am private ambulance companies. I'm looking to volunteer somewhere. I was looking at the firefighter programs. I want to volunteer. Um, my dad was a firefighter for 30 years. So. With emergency training abound, the EMT basics course seems to be well on its way to providing a quality education that students need to prepare them for real world situations and to save lives. It looks like challenging yet rewarding training. Hats off to everyone in that program. Well, Mike, I would like to thank you for having me on the show today and for your interest in our nursing program. Thank you, Rosemary. You've been a great co-host. I certainly learned quite a bit about the different aspects of emergency training and how it leads directly to employment. Today's show has been dedicated to all the police officers and firefighters, the EMTs, the doctors and the nurses, and to anyone whose job it is to come to the aid of others. We at Stormwatch thank you for your selfless dedication to your jobs. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Mike Vernick, and for Rosemary Erkins, thank you all for watching today's edition of Storm.